Hi everyone, in this practical math video, we are going to look at an adapted primary 6 mathematics PSLE question from 2016. And this happens to be a ratio question that many kids find challenging. Before we start, if you are looking for a more effective and fun way to prepare for your primary school math exam, or just want to get better at math, don't forget to check out practical and see how we can help, alright? Now back to the word problem. Farmer Ted divided a square piece of land into four parts to grow different crops. He wanted to grow sweet corns in area A, rice in area B, carrots in area C, and put some scarecrows in area D. Wow, that sounds really exciting, right? Next, we are given that the ratio of area A, the part with the sweet corns, to the area of the entire piece of land is 1 is to 9. So let's think about what this means, alright? When we say that the ratio of area A to the area of the entire piece of land is 1 is to 9, we are saying that area A can be represented by one part, and the entire piece of land can be represented by 9 parts. Falling so far? Reading on, we are then given that the ratio of area B, the part with the yummy rice, to the area of the entire piece of land is 1 is to 6. And what can we tell from this? Just like how we read this ratio earlier on, we can tell that area B is represented by one part, while the area of the entire piece of land is represented by 6 parts. Hmm. But this is pretty weird. I thought we said that the entire piece of land was represented by 9 parts. Looks like this might be something that we need to work out later on. But before we do that, let's see what question we are supposed to solve. What fraction of the land does area D take up? To find the answer, we will definitely need two things, correct? The number of parts that represent area D, and the number of parts that represent the area of the whole piece of land. Now let's look at the entire piece of land first, alright? Remember that we had something weird going on earlier on? We were given that the ratio of area A to the area of the entire piece of land is 1 is to 9, correct? And the ratio of area B to the entire piece of land is 1 is to 6. Since the area of the whole piece of land should be the same in both cases, what do you think we can do to the ratios to show this? Well, I hope you said make 9 and 6 the same. And in order to do that, let's put on our little thinking caps and think of the lowest common multiple between 9 and 6, okay? What's the smallest number that appears in the multiplication table of 9 and 6? Did you say 18? If you did, that was some really fantastic thinking. Now, the next thing that we need to do is to turn this 9 that you see here into 18. And this 6 that you see here into 18 as well. So let's start with the ratio 1 is to 9. How do we transform 9 to 18? Well, we can multiply this by 2, correct? And don't forget that because we are dealing with ratios, when we change the ratio of one side of the ratio, we need to change the value on the other side of the ratio too, okay? So 9 times 2 equals 18, and 1 times 2 gives us 2. Great job everyone! And now we know that 1 is to 9 is the same as 2 is to 18. Next, let's look at the ratio 1 is to 6. Can you guess what we are going to do with these numbers? If you said turn 6 into 18, you are right. So what number times 6 gives us 18? 3 times 6 gives us 18, correct? And what do you get when you multiply 1 by 3? I hope you got 3. And here's our new ratio. 3 is to 18. And now that we have the same number of parts to represent the same piece of land, we are halfway done. The next thing that we are going to do is to find out how many parts make up area D. Okay? And this is also the tough part of this math problem. So what's the trick to solving this question? Well, the trick, my dear friends, is to make use of what we know about shapes. Alright? Now looking at what we have, Although this line here is not perpendicular to the square, can you see that if we were to draw a perpendicular line from this point here to touch the line of the square over here, we can divide the whole piece of land into two rectangles. Agree? The area of this part is going to be the same as area A, and the area of this part will be the same as area D. And once we know that, it doesn't really matter where the line is drawn in this triangle to cut it into two smaller triangles. The area of B plus C is exactly the same as the area of A plus D. Falling so far? And that's the biggest discovery that we have. B plus C equals to A plus D. Super! Now let's fill in this equation with what we know so far, okay? We know that the whole area of this square is made up of 18 parts. Agree? Since we can divide this into two equal areas, the area of each part is going to be 18 parts divided by 2, 9 parts. Does this make sense? We know that area A is made up of 2 parts and area B is made up of 3 parts. 
So 3 plus C equals to 2 plus D. And can you find how many parts represent area D? Think about 2 plus what number gives us 9. Did you say 7? Good job if you did. And that's how we know that area D is made up of 7 parts. And now it's time to answer this ratio question. What fraction of the land does area D take up? To find the fraction, we are going to put the part that represents area D on top and the parts that represent the whole area of the land below. And this gives us an answer of 7 over 18. And that's how we know that area D takes up 7 over 18 of the land. I hope this video on solving this primary 6 ratio question helped you in some way or another. What have you learned from this video? Share with us in the comments below, alright? If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up or subscribe to our channel so that you always know when new videos are up. As always, thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy problem solving!